Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about hard aspects between Jupiter and Pluto, specifically the square and the opposition. So when Jupiter and Pluto are an aspect to each other, it's considered a generational aspect um, that will probably last about a year, give or take, a few months. <laughs> So because they're generational aspects, the effects that these people have through the work that uh, these generations do with what these aspects represent for that generation, you know, the, the, the work that they do with themselves through these aspects, those effects will be seen through broader levels you know, as they grow into, you know, adults and into the world, they go out into the world and stuff like that. Like the effects of generational aspects are they bleed through society. And especially because it's Jupiter, it's going to kind of um, be expanded through cultural contexts or cultural systems, uh, belief systems. So religious systems too. So Jupiter is beliefs and ideologies and our sense of meaning in life. And Pluto is about security and attachments and wealth. So when these two come into a hard aspect, they are working out their fundamental principles, I guess, like what they're about. What they're about is in conflict. So I'm going to start with the square first. The squares create tension so in my opinion squares are more obvious in um i guess it's more obvious it's more apparent that there's a problem <laughs> when you have a square because it creates um direct tension within you or within your environment so because that is more apparent to the individual who has a square between Jupiter and Pluto, the call for change or adjustment is going to be easily recognizable. Now, this doesn't mean that it's easier to accomplish. It's not easier necessarily to let go of either one of these archetypal, archetypal needs. <laughs> so especially because Pluto creates a fear in letting go. So because Pluto is involved, Jupiter is kind of being influenced by the energy of Pluto, by the needs of Pluto, and Pluto desires attachment and security. That's how, that's what Pluto feeds on. And because it's Jupiter, it's getting that need met through belief systems but when they're in hard aspect they have to work out that dynamic so because this is not like easy aspects in conjunctions where it's easily uh blended together or trines or sextiles where their energies are easily used together to accomplish something with squares and oppositions and even in conjunctions one of them has to give. So if Jupiter is moving towards Pluto, then it's attempting to combine the beliefs of the individual with the sense of security and power and wealth and transformation. So when it does this, when it combines, it can then, the beliefs can justify the attachments of Pluto or the beliefs will bring in the uh, desire for transformation out of those attachments. So the beliefs combining with Pluto are working through their own meaning in order to develop a stronger sense of power. So that combination of Jupiter going with Pluto is what needs to be worked out. Now, if Jupiter is moving away from Pluto, it's attempting to actually do the opposite. It's attempting to free itself 
from Pluto's binds. And Pluto, because it, it clings to things, it will cling to a belief system for that exact sense of power and security. So Jupiter in this case is attempting to liberate itself from that need to be able to transform out of that and develop a belief system that is more about conceptualizing life from a broader perspective without it being derived from a sense of fear or searching for power. It's about finding its power on its own with the belief that it it holds, not because it's associated with that fear, I guess you could say. So that's how, that's like a brief overview of the square. Now I'm going to talk about the opposition now because the opposition is actually, I feel like I have a lot more to say about it. <laughs> Uh, the opposition, both of these archetypes and these needs are attempting to balance each other out, but they're attempting to do it while not sacrificing one for the other. So this one can go two ways. And I actually learned this from uh, Jewel Mayberry. She kind of briefly described this opposition once, but I, I put the pieces together just today and I've you know, that's what I'm going to share because she said that it could either make a person very rigidly like entrenched in their beliefs and they fight for like a very dogmatic viewpoint or they could fight with the same kind of power or vigor, I guess you could say, <laughs> for like a transformation out of that belief system. So, and the way that this fits in my brain, like the way that I see it is a person who maybe is going on the end of remaining fixed in their beliefs will keep it perfectly intact because they know that if they go on either end to try to work something out with either Pluto or Jupiter, the entire belief system and the entire security system can collapse. So that's why they become dogmatic in their views because fighting for these views is their sense of power and security. So for those that do go on either end and people with this opposition can do this throughout their lives. Like I'm not saying it's it's only either or like aspects aren't that black and white, but I'm, I'm just trying to give you some examples of this. For those that do actually go on one of the ends trying to work out their Pluto or work out their Jupiter, they end up realizing that one of them has to give, right? <laughs> so the sense of security that, that they obtain through their beliefs has to transform itself in order to establish a sense of meaning free of that attachment. So the beliefs and the ideological or ideological identity um, and the attachment to that belief may have to be sacrificed, Pluto, in order to be free of that. Or I guess this would be Jupiter, yeah. The belief would have to be, so if you're going to work out Jupiter, the belief would have to be sacrificed in order to accomplish something with Pluto, which would be to develop a deeper psychological sense of wealth. Um, not just one that's derived from Jupiter beliefs. So these people can do this work and end up being really powerful spiritual leaders because they will have had to work out this opposition this oppositional force between their beliefs and their sense of power and what that means for them. And those who remain on either end, on either Pluto or Jupiter, or even those who don't choose to attempt to work that out. Sorry, I had to pause briefly. Um, they may think that they're balanced 
but it might just be their own fears keeping them in that place, like in keeping the opposition as a straight line, which is what you want to do. But when it comes to what Jupiter and Pluto represent, eventually it's going to fluctuate because I mean, life life's going to kick you down at some point or another, and you're going to have to rebuild one of these ends eventually. And what you want is for it to be balanced, but to be balanced because both of these archetypes have been uh, readjusted. So it's about facing fears of losing one or the other. So unraveling what's keeping this opposition from swinging if you are someone that wants to remain fixed on a certain belief system. It's about maybe asking yourself why that is, is what I'm trying to say. So, and then people who just, who can't ever get to that point, who can't ever balance it out, maybe you have to look and think, well, why am I not incorporating um, one of the one of the other pieces of this opposition why am i afraid to feel a sense of power with my beliefs or why am i so attached to my beliefs <laughs> so it could be either or um so doing this can actually help you pinpoint where this opposition fits into your psychological sense of wealth and prosperity and it's actually one of the key ways to balance this opposition because it's about going beyond what you have already conceptualized and then attached to to what you didn't know and in what you don't know and what you don't realize that you don't know <laughs> lies the true power of your beliefs that you actually always had but maybe you didn't realize that it was there <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense um it's a very interesting aspect and i mean just to kind of ramble now because i feel like i've said everything i want to say i worked with um my first year working at the daycare center that I work at, I worked with the children who had um, the opposition when it occurred in 2014. And they also had the Pluto Uranus square, so they definitely challenged us. But I guess I was thinking about them today and I was just thinking of all the things that I feel like that generation is going to do when they get older. So yeah, if you have it, it's it's a really cool and powerful placement. It's just, you know, the hard aspects, even the easy aspects, it's just with the harder aspects, there's more to work out. But I think that, that that's where the depth of this aspect, of the hard aspects between Pluto and Jupiter comes through, is through that inner work and understanding your beliefs and the root of them. So hopefully this helped you and thank you for watching.